Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so um, my name is David Whale. You can find me as Whaley Geek on uh, Twitter. Um, and I've just made um, a little collection of slides, one picture, one, one or two phrases, just to go through some of the experiences being a STEM ambassador in the school. Um, I'm also, I do quite a lot of work through the IET, and um, I'm an ambassador for the IET, and in the Essex, I work mainly in the Essex region, and I'm the school's liaison officer uh, there for the IET. So, there's a number of different ways that, as a STEM ambassador, um, I can help in schools. And so here's one way I work. So um, before a lesson, and I have some examples here. So if you go and see at the, the top of the concourse when you go here, there's a school there called Stewards Academy. That's one of the schools that I work with. And um, Andrew there is a school science <coughs> technician. Um, so he's normally busy um, cleaning all the, the beakers and all the other bits and pieces, but he runs um, a Rasi Pi club. He's not an expert Python programmer, and we didn't call up Python programming with the kids. And he would often say, oh, the kids keep asking me questions about um, why is it this Python program is not working, so they're not an expert. So one of the things I did um, as a before lesson was I made these tiny little flashcards, and you can download them for free from my blog, and basically just tiny, tiny little programs, about four or five lines of Python that you can type in, and they're all organised into section in terms of if statements and print statements. And these were inspired by my good friend Alan O'Donoghue, who's sitting down in front here, um, I listened to a, a blog that he, he runs, uh, it's on audio boo, isn't it, Alan, about um, teaching GCSE computing. And he was talking about an idea he uses in his lessons, which was to get the children to walk through a series of progressive exercises, typing your name, how old are you, those sorts of things. Uh, basically, I turn these into tiny little flashcards, and the idea is you put them in your top pocket, um, and then when uh, a child comes up to you and says, why is this program not working? Why am I getting a syntax error? You can say, oh, yeah, if statement, that's because you've missed the colon. And the children find this quite useful as well. Um, so they're uh, separate cards, but you can just lay them out on the desk and they can, um, they can pick them up and, and learn each one individually. And as an ambassador or as a teacher, you can also sit down and go through them and use them as a, re a review technique and say, please show me a program that uses an output statement. Yep, yeah, you've done that, tick, put it one size. Please show me a program that uses an if statement. So it's quite good to review what, what children are doing. So that was really, really easy for me to put together. I'm a um, professional software engineer by day, um, so picking up new program names is quite quick for me. That was before lesson activity. During lessons, um, so I do a fair amount of work in Raspberry Pi clubs and lessons, and this is a typical kit of bits that I might take out with me, box of Raspberry Pis and leads and, and um, a collection of uh, uh, books and things. And I was asked by a school over in Essex a few weeks back, um, so looking at um, engaging with Raspberry Pi and didn't know where to start. So I put together some resources. I used um, Carrie Ann Philbin's um, book, Adventures in Raspberry Pi, for some of the exercises, and ran a, a, a two hour workshop. Um, and at the end of that, I took a, a poll before and after, uh, asking how many of those felt they might um, do some more work in computing. There's more hands at the end, which is like a good sign. Um, what was useful was that the teachers didn't know where to start with Raspberry Pi, and actually sometimes just going in as a STEM ambassador and saying, here's something you can do to start off. You know, just gives people ideas. Wrong way. After school, so um, I have the world's most um, boring looking blog. Um, it's all very, very simple, but um, basically when we, we learn different um, little nuggets of information from in classrooms, I tend to write a little blog entry and send it around on Twitter. So for example, um, one of the, um, actually it was Tyler, one of the lads that's in uh, Stuart's Academy, uh, wanted to write a game and he wanted to add sounds to his game. And uh, the children didn't know how to, uh, how to add sounds. So I spent a bit of time after school investigating, reading the documentation, working out how to do that. And what came out of that was a little one page example of how to, how to play sounds in Python on the Raspberry Pi. There's some resources there that are free. Please have a look through them. Please download them and try them out. Because um, I'm a member of the IET, I also get asked to go and support various career fairs. And uh, the IET give me um, uh, a nice pack of information about what it's like to be an engineer, various posters and giveaways and things. And uh, this was a very early table that I did, which was loads of giveaways. What I tend to do now is I tend to have some activity to do. 
So I've got some various bits of electronics that I can talk about that I actually designed as an engineer and have a discussion with children about what engineering is and what computer programming is and, and how you might get into that as a, uh, as a profession. Instead of lessons, so in December last year I was involved with an organisation called North Arts College over in Stevenage and um, Ryan who's uh, um, building some robots out there today was one of my helpers uh, and this is quite a, um, a nice capture of some of the behind the scenes that happened and on the top left you'll see uh, myself and some stone ambassadors um, working through building all the resources up. So you probably know as a teacher that when you give a class, um, there's a huge amount of preparation that can go into getting the resources working. So as a STEM ambassador, it's quite good to, to go in and support teachers and do some of that testing and, and develop the resources. The top right is the thing that you never see with Raspberry Pi, which is we had um, 102 Raspberry Pis in this um, huge workshop we were running. So we had to make 102 flashcards. Each one took about seven minutes to, to, to make. So we were all previously working over the weekend with loads and loads of laptops burning all these flashcards. So that's, again, even if you don't like uh, working directly with children, just doing some of that groundwork behind the scenes. Um, uh, there's always loads of things to do to prepare for, for exercises. And the bottom two is just a couple of pictures of STEM ambassadors working with children at this, at this event. Saturday clubs, so you'll see, actually some of these programmes you'll see uh, on show outside on the Stewart's Academy stand. So um, uh, Jamie, who's out there today, he wrote a Space Invaders game, which was something that he developed over a number of weeks at a, a Raspberry Pi club, and you can see that on the left. And then on the right, he had this idea that he wanted a portable um, games machine, and he's brought Porta Pi with him today. Um, he's made all of the case for himself, he's put the Raspberry Pi inside it, um, he's written all the Python programs, it's a complete, a complete package. And bottom right, you can see Alex from Raspberry Pi TV there. This was at the last Raspberry Gem we came to. And um, someone from the Pi Foundation had spotted this and um, got Jamie to write up a whole set of worksheet notes which are published on the, you can see that on the Raspberry Pi Foundation website. So that's a quite inspiring little story. But as a STEM ambassador, basically I was there trying to um, break down some of the programming into smaller chunks, um, trying to help them go through the thinking process of what you need to do to take a big problem and break it down into smaller problems. Raspberry James, of course, like the excellent Cambridge Raspberry Gen. Uh, this is actually a picture of the one and only Harlow Raspberry Gen that we ran. And if you look very carefully on the far left there, you can see Michael setting up his pie order. And Raspberry Gems are great, actually. One of the things I really, really like about Raspberry Gems for schools is it gives you an event to work towards. So the reason those kids are out there today, the reason Joseph is out there showing his fantastic robot arm, he moves his rural arm and the robot arm changes position, um, the reason uh, that he's inspired to do that is that we keep saying to him, in three weeks' time, we're going to show that off with the Cambridge Raspberry Jam. And he gives him a reason, something to work towards. And actually, it's one of the things we find with clubs in schools is that they do fizzle out sometimes unless you've got some event to work towards. So Raspberry Jam is a really, a, a really useful um, uh, form for that. How much do we cost? Well, simple answer there, naught pounds and naught pence. Um, obviously, there's a cost associated with it. All STEM ambassadors are, are free. We provide our time for free. Um, uh, Elizabeth, I'm sure you'll sort of tell people, you know, there, there's various funding avenues and things that you get to access to those people. Um, but we give our time for free. And why do we do it? Well, for me, I think this, this captures why I do this. So about a year ago, I was worried about the future of my profession. So I'm a professional software engineer, I write software in the day, and I was worried that the children of today weren't engaging with technology, being interested in things that I was interested in. And it's such a great profession to work in. So for me, it's a way of giving a little bit back and saying, actually, this is a really, really great profession to work in. Uh, let's have a go. Let's try and work through some of those problems and get it working. And I feel like I'm protecting the industry that I work in a bit. That's why I do it for free. And uh, this was um, a slide I especially put up for um, Alan when I gave this talk at the Raspberry Jamboree, you may remember, because the little star says, we are not teachers. And everybody was apologising for not being a teacher at that event. And the time I put this slide up, you just walked out the room, so I couldn't actually point at you. Um, so I'm not a teacher, um, and I do recognise that actually 
um, as, as teachers, you're the best people to be doing the teaching. Um, but I'm a professional engineer, so together we can work together and say, well, here's some ideas and resources, um, but, but teachers, you're the best people that's um, uh, the best place to actually deliver that to, to classes with them are there to support. How do you request a seven ambassador? I think Elizabeth probably went into that. Um, you can um, register your school and access um, uh, via the STEM net organisation. Um, you, uh, it's uh, STEM Team East, isn't it? Is, is in, in this region, so you can uh, contact Elizabeth the STEM Team East. Also, you'll find the various professional bodies. So I work for the uh, as volunteer for the IET, also the British Computer Society, uh, Institute of Physics, Institute of Mechanical Engineers. Uh, all have um, ambassador engagement programs, but you'll find that they they put their seven ambassadors into schools via people like like Elizabeth. Thank you very much. That was just a short tour of some of the things I've done. Um, if anyone's got any questions, please do ask some questions. I've also got um, some free uh, handout booklets from the IAT if anyone would like them about some of the, uh, the, the free STEM engagement programs that the IAT offer as well that we can deliver through the STEM team list. Any questions, anyone? Go on, must, must be one burning question in the audience somewhere. Yeah. Uh, did you find it difficult starting in Python? Right, so the question was, did I find it difficult starting with Python with the kids? Um, I've got an interesting story to tell about that, which is the very first time I saw Python, I hated it, because some of the resources that I'd seen, they, they, they showed some very advanced areas of Python. Python is a real programming language, it's got some very, very detailed, complex constructs in it. Um, and I was a bit worried about it. And then someone, I think it's Alex Bradbury from the Rise of Pi Foundation, said, no, stick with it. He said it's a good language, so I, I trusted him. Um, and actually, as a language, um, it, it is really quite good in schools for children because I call it an incremental learning language. So unlike C and C++ and Java and other languages where you have a lot of top and tail to write before you can even write the program, in Python, if all you want to do is to print something on the screen, you just say print and it comes out. So you don't have a lot of mess around the outside. And there are some dark corners of Python, some very advanced areas, but if you still clear those, then actually it's quite a good language. And the experience we've had in schools has been, um, if you start, so one of the things I do do is I try to encourage children to get through the basics of the language, so if statements, for loops, while loops, make sure they understand that core. And then Python has a whole vast collection of pre-written library code that you can use to do some really exciting things like graphics on the screen or play sound or record video. So as long as you focus on keeping away from some of the dark areas of the language, just treat it that it's, it's, it's just a tool and just try and to, you know, not be frightened about it. Um, it has actually worked quite well. I was quite surprised actually. What age children, what age children do you work with? Uh, myself, I work with secondary, so it's um, uh, seven, seven to um, uh, 15, 16 year olds. Sorry, 11 to 15, 16 year olds. I've not done much work in primary yet. Um, I've been having a chat with some primary school teachers here to, to find out how, how things differ in primary school. In, in primary school, it's hard for the masters to go in with the code club material. Mm -hmm. That's quite a Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a little bit of the code club because uh, Ryan has been doing some code club, and I was quite impressed with it, actually. And one of the nice things about code club is that it is very well curated and organised. So you, there's a, a whole collection of resources that ambassadors will go in and teach from, uh, and there are sort of things to achieve every lesson. Um, the thing to watch with Raspberry Pi clubs is that they can be quite experimental. So there's lots and lots of opportunities of things you can do in a club. Uh, and as a STEM ambassador, I spent a lot of my time just trying to decode um, instructions off the internet that are wrong and trying to <laughs> try to work out why they're wrong. Um, any question here? Would you recommend any programming environment which is good for beginners, like an editor that is easy to use or? If you want to use your Python. Yeah, so uh, what comes pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi is idle. Um, uh, recently I've been starting to use a package called Genie, G-E-A-N-Y. And actually um, uh, a couple of the lads um, on the um, stewards 
um, Stuart's tent. They have got Genie installed. Um, it's um, it's a slightly nice environment to use because it shows your errors a bit clearer. Um, I mean, the, the idea that comes with the Rise of Pi is very, very basic. Um, uh, you can run a program in it, you can edit the program, and you can cut and paste and those sorts of things. The one thing to watch with Python is that it's a language where the, the indent of the left is very, very important, and that's probably the, the biggest single thing that we end up um, getting stuck with sometimes, where they haven't tabbed the code across the code. Um, and, and Genie seems to make a slightly better, better uh, job of the indentation. I mean, idle is good enough. If you just turn the Raspberry Pi out of the box and get the program in the idle, it's, you can get quite a long way with that. 